But Jesus wrote these seven letters to the churches in the book of Revelation. He writes to these seven churches, and one of them was a pretty wealthy one. And when I read the letter, I just go, wow, that's America. This is a letter to the church in America. It freaks me out how similar it is. A lot of you guys know exactly what I'm talking about. It's a church in Laodicea in Revelation chapter 3, verse 14. It's, it's, it's crazy when you read this. You go, man, that's so us. And that's scary because it's not a nice letter. He says in Revelation 3, verse 14, he says, to the angel of the church in Laodicea, right, these are the words of the amen, the faithful and true witness, the ruler of God's creation. Verse 15, I know your deeds, that you're neither cold nor hot. I wish you were either one or the other. So because you are lukewarm, neither hot nor cold, I'm about to spit you out of my mouth. Okay, I'm not, again, I'm not going to go deep into the geography and, and tell you about the history of this and that because I, I think sometimes we miss the point of the passage by getting too into the details. And that's especially true in this passage. It's simple. Jesus says to this church, you're not hot, you're not cold, you're just kind of lukewarm, just kind of casual about me. I feel like just spitting you out of my mouth. You make me gag. It's, it's, it's not like a hot cup of coffee. It's not like an iced mocha. You're just like this lukewarm coffee. I, I sip it by accident. I just, oh, that's disgusting. He goes, that's what I think of your church. Because you're not fired up about me. You're not on fire. You're lukewarm. And a lot of it is because they're rich. You see it in the next verse, verse 17. He says, you say, I'm rich. I've acquired wealth. I don't need a thing. Some of you guys, I don't need a crutch. I'm doing fine. He goes, but you don't realize that you're wretched, pitiful, poor, blind, naked. I counsel you to buy from me gold refined in the fire so you can become rich and white clothes to wear so you can cover your shameful nakedness and salve to put on your eyes so you can see. See, this church, they were kind of laid back about God because they didn't feel like, oh, I'm depending on God. God, give me this day, my daily bread. That's not us. That's the last time you're like, oh God, give me something to eat today. No, it's like, well, I don't really need God for my food. I don't really need God for my home. I don't really need God to give me money for the rest of it because I've got my whole retirement set up. And I've got money to leave for my kids so they don't even have to depend on God. I mean, none of us really need to depend on him for our daily necessities. He goes, it creates this sense of security to suddenly you feel like you're not a needy person. Because no one on their right mind would look at you and say, wow, you're needy. Those people in Simi Valley, they're so needy. And God says, they don't get it. They really are the needy ones. They're actually the ones that, in my eyes, are wretched, pitiful, poor, blind, naked. It's disgusting because of their view of me, because they're not on fire. Are you on fire for God right now? See, my concern is that some of you in this room, many of you, I'm not judging, I'm just saying that you would probably say it about yourself, that you're lukewarm. If I were to ask you, okay, are you on fire for God right now or are you lukewarm? I think a lot of you would say you're lukewarm. What concerns me more than the fact that you're lukewarm is that some of you would say, yeah, I am lukewarm. And then you'll walk out the door and you'll do nothing about it. What concerns me the most is that some of you are lukewarm. You know you're lukewarm, but you want to be lukewarm. You've planned your life out this way. You, you've got enough God in your life. It's not like you don't, you don't want to be on fire. I mean, I look at the majority of the American church, they don't want to be on fire. They want a little bit of God. Of course they want God. I want a little bit of God. I mean, it's good. It's good for my kids. It's good to give them a little bit of morals. It's good to, you know, learn to give a little bit here and there, serve a little bit. But I've got enough of God. I don't have enough money. I don't got enough stuff. I don't got a big enough house. I, I need more of that. But I've, I think I've got enough God in my life right now. And it's crazy. Not only are you lukewarm, but that's the goal. You're lukewarm and you're loving it. And you hate for anyone to challenge you to be on fire for God. 
we're content here. It's, it's the craziest thing. Do you understand this passage? What is lukewarm equal? Spit out. Well, what does spit out mean? I mean, you know, can you explain that? I, I need to? What, what do you want to hear? Oh, it comes from the Hebrew word hak, which means hak. You know, uh, you know what, what, what do you want? What, what do you want? I mean, it's this, this idea of spit out. And people have asked, well, does it necessarily mean that if I'm lukewarm that I'm going to hell? Because if you're spit out of his mouth, can you be spit out of his mouth and still be saved? And I'm going, well, you read it. Look at the words. Okay, you're wretched, pitiful, poor, blind. Are, are these words that you normally use for a believer? I once was blind, but now I'm blind. <laughs> you, you know, it, no, no, these are, un, these are people who aren't saved. See, because if you get it, you won't be lukewarm. And this isn't about work salvation. It's not about, okay, if I work enough, then I'm suddenly on fire. No, I'm saying if you get it, the kingdom of heaven is a person who goes, whoa, you're kidding me. Okay, here, here's everything. I'm, I'm getting this treasure here. It's not about a person going, I don't know, that's pretty good, I, that's pretty good too. I don't know what I want. There's God, there's the world, there's God, there's, I don't know. God says, oh, you, you, you make me want to gag. So, so you're looking at me, okay, the maker of the world, and then you on this little planet, you're looking at this little house here in this little car and going, man, I don't know if I can give that up or retirement for a few years. And you comparing me, the creator, the one who made the whole world, who spoke it into existence, and you're going, ooh, I don't know if I can give out this little thing on this piece of dirt for him. He goes, that makes me sick. You make me want to gag. I just want to spit you out of my mouth. See, your riches have so blinded you that you think this stuff is good. You don't see it as dung. It's a big pile of crap. And you don't get it. You think it's actually good. It's all this great stuff. You've been blinded by it. He goes, and that just makes me sick. God looks and he goes, man, you're comparing me to this? You're wondering if I'm valuable enough? Man, the kingdom of heaven is a guy that just goes, duh, are you kidding me? Let me just sell everything. It's about a guy that jumps out of the tree and goes, forget it. I can have God? He goes, but these people that are lukewarm, that, that's just repulsive. That's just sick to me. See, my, my, my concern is that the people will see themselves as lukewarm, because we do this in church all the time. Yeah, I, I'm lukewarm. And then 10 minutes later, you're going to forget about it and move on in life. And I just go, what else is there to think about? Okay, so, so you understand what lukewarm is, so you're going to be spit out of the mouth of God. You, you just go, okay. I go, man, you shouldn't do anything until you figure out how to be on fire for God. You should be down on your face. You shouldn't eat again until you come before God and just fast and pray, God, get me on fire. I'm not on fire. You gotta get me on fire for you. I wanna be in love with you. I gotta see how valuable you are compared to all this other junk. You know, get me here. That should be all you care about. Don't go to work tomorrow if you're lukewarm. Man, sell your house, just move, live in the, do whatever it takes. You can't end your life lukewarm. Do you get that? I mean, why, why are Jesus' words so strong? He, he says in the next verse, verse 19, why does he say it so harshly? Verse 19, those whom I love, I rebuke and discipline, so be earnest and repent. Why is God saying this? He goes, because I love you. I don't want to spit you out of my mouth. You understand? I love you, and that's why I'm speaking so harshly, and I'm rebuking you. He goes, and I'll discipline you too. I'll have things happen in your life to get your attention because you're lukewarm. And if you end this way, I'm just going to spit you out of my mouth because that's disgusting. It's repulsive to me. You make me gag when you, when you question whether I'm worthy of everything and you compare me to your stuff and your false security, your idols. 